these times of pandemic, much of our lives and activism takes place in digital spaces, including our erotic and sexual lives. In Frida, we believe that it is very important to have some recommendations on how to send erotic and nude messages safely. Sexting is great, and it is even better if you feel safe while doing it. To do sexting, we need to have a secure messaging application. We recommend looking for a messaging application or a chat application that allows you to disable screenshots, auto destruction of messages and files, block messages forwarding and include end-to-end -end encryption of messages. This means that your messages can only be seen by the people who receive and send them. An application that meets these characteristics is Sigma, but there are other different applications. You can do some research on them and use the one that makes you feel more secure. Remember to make clear agreements with the people that you sext with. It is your right to say what you like, establish your limits, say what is negotiable and what is non-negotiable to you. As our feminist colleagues would say, we do not sext if there are no clear agreements. Thank you, Tedic, for that. In addition to having clear agreements with the other person, here are some tips to send photos, messages or videos taking care of your privacy and identity. Tip number one. It is important to have the consent of the other person before sending nudes or sexting. Ask the other person if they want to receive erotic photos or videos from you before sending them. Tip number two. Leave something to the imagination that is quite sexy. You can leave your face, your tattoos, your scars, your birthmarks, among other characteristics, to the imagination of the other person and out of your photos or videos. This is also helpful so that people on the web cannot identify you very easily. Tip number three. Avoid showing key spaces in your house, your room or bathroom that can identify you, such as the poster of your favorite artist, your favorite books, or your bed cover. It is best to use neutral backgrounds. The less they know about you, the better to keep your identity safe and sound. In addition, you can blur your face, your scars or tattoos to avoid being recognized. Basically, the best recommendation is to leave your identity to the imagination of those who you sext with. Tip number four. Many times we do some sexting with more than one person at a time. Identify who you send photos or videos to. In order to do this, you can insert a watermark, a specific filter, the name of who you are sending it to, or an emoji in the photo or video, so you can identify who you send the photos or videos to very easily. This is a precaution in case your photos get leaked, so you can identify who received them at first. Tip number five. Deactivate the automatic synchronization of photos and videos so that the pictures or videos you use for sexting are not uploaded to your storage in the cloud without your permission. Tip number six. When you delete your photos or videos from your cell phone or your computer, remember always, always to delete these and check that those are not just left in the trash. And if your photos or videos ended up in the trash, go ahead and delete them. Tip number seven, enjoy your body. Take several photos, find the angles that you like the most of yourself and send those ones. Well, one last tip, but not the least important. What if your photos or videos are shared without your consent? If someone you trusted sent those photos to someone else, what would happen? The first thing you should know is that it is never your fault. It is not your fault that the other person violated your trust and sent those photos to someone else. The second thing and very important thing for you to know is that you are not alone. Your friends, comrades, community are surely there to help you. 
Seek support amongst those people and you will surely find more information. You can also visit the following websites that have a lot of information on how to take care on safe sexting and what to do in case your intimate photos or videos have been shared without your consent. You can enter and visit the websites that we left on the description of this episode. These are spaces created by cyber and hack feminists from different places in the world. We thank them all. We hope these tips and recommendations were helpful so that you can enjoy a sexual and erotic life online through sexting. And in the meantime, you can always look up the other resources that we have uploaded to the Frida Young Feminist Fund website. And there you can find advice and information on how to protect your email, your cell phone and computer and how to have safe digital communication during these times. We send you strength and courage for these days. At Frida, we're committed to bringing digital security care practices to the community of young feminists and activists, right in these times of isolation and uncertainty. This audio clip is part of a series of resources with different tips and topics that you can find more about on, on our website. Thank you!